Hi guys and welcome back. Today I am showing you a very quick little tutorial on one of the basic techniques for watercolor and that is the graded wash. And the graded wash is one of my favorite techniques to use when I'm using watercolor because it adds a lot of variation and it's also very versatile on how I can use it and how I can get the depth and the interest and the details that I want with it. But first off, what a graded wash is, is it simply a gradient, a gradient created with watercolor. So what you can do is you can start off with a color and then gradiate it out into just clear water, or you can gradiate it into two different colors together. I prefer to do the method of simply going from a color into clear water and then layering multiple graded washes on top of each other to eventually get the look that I want. So if I wanted two colors together, I would usually do one wash going one direction, let it dry, and then another wash going the other direction, let it dry simply because it allows me to have a little bit more control, but I will talk a little bit on how you can do both of those. But starting off, there are two basic techniques on how you can get your graded washes. One is wet on wet and the other is wet on dry. And as the name kind of implies is wet on wet is where you get the paper wet first with just plain water before you add any of the colors. And then you go in with the color itself and you create the graded wash on top of it. And this is probably my favorite way to do it, but I always forget to do it this way because I always forget to lay down that first initial layer of just water. But when you do that, you can get really beautifully blended graded washes. It lets the watercolor do what it's good at and that's just blending out and meshing out. And that's the first example that I'm doing here is wet on wet. And when you're doing a graded wash, you just have the paint mixed up and then you have a little dish of clear water. And starting off at the top of where you want the color to be the most saturated, I go in straight with the paint and I just stroke it down once and then twice. And then I will dip the brush into a little bit of the clear water and then mix it a little bit with the paint. And then I do a couple more strokes with the brush again. And then I dip a little bit into the water and I mix it into that area that I had already mixed the water in. And it's just a process of introducing more and more water as I dip my brush in until I get to the point where I decide to only go into the water. Now, when you're doing this, you'll see that a little bit of the pigment pulls down each time you go in there. So there's a point where I can go in it with just the clear water and it'll still bring down a very soft color to it. So it will have this really beautiful graded wash effect without it needing to be something that I very precisely mix in the colors. It really does do its job well when it comes to watercolors. It wants to do this very blended look. And you'll see that I'm switching back and forth between the left and the right side, the pink side and the blue side that is. And the pink side is all wet on wet. So each time I do a new graded wash, that is entirely wet on wet. And then the blue side is all wet on dry. So when it comes to wet on dry, this one is one that I tend to do by default just because I tend to prefer working wet on dry anyways. But what you wanna do when you're doing something like this is to make sure that your brush is loaded up, that it's very wet. If you try to do wet on dry without having a very wet brush, if it's a little bit on the drier side, you'll start getting banding in the pigment and you'll see these streaks throughout your graded wash, which is the opposite of what you want. You want a very smooth gradient. So make sure that you have it very loaded up with water. And as you're doing this, each stroke that you do, you want to pull that drop of water from the bottom downward. Each time it'll pull it down, it'll pull it down. And as it does that, that pigment within the water will slowly be settling down on the paper and it'll create this really gorgeous gradient effect. And while the name is wet on wet, one thing to remember when you're using watercolors is never put new layers down when it's in between being wet and dry. So I only put paint down when I have just loaded up the paper with water, it's wet, it's saturated, and it's ready to have paint on it, or when it's completely dry. If it's started to dry, but still a little bit wet to the touch and you put another layer down, it can disrupt that really smooth gradient below it and it'll give it this very splotchy look or it can be very uncontrollable how it does affect it. So make sure that whether you're doing wet on wet or wet on dry, that it is either completely wet or completely dry. And as I'm using the brush, the way that I like to do it is I'll usually layer the top half of the brush over that last stroke that I just did and the bottom half of the brush over the unpainted part of the paper. So each stroke that I do is half on top, half 
underneath where I painted. And this helps so that each time I go over that, it pulls the paint down from the layer above it, from that little strip of water, that droplet that you can see there, it'll pull that paint down. And each time that I add a little bit more water or a little bit more of the other color of paint, if I'm doing two paints together, it will pull that pigment down and eventually it'll just get less and less and less, but it will do so in a very gradual way. So again, I do it half over that brush stroke that I just did and half over new paper area. And just like any other technique, whether I'm doing flat washes or graded washes, I definitely prefer layering on top of each wash. And that's just where you glaze it. So again, just make sure that that layer is completely dry before you do the next one. But here for this example, I think I do maybe three glazings on top of it. And that adds a lot more saturation to the colors there. It'll add three layers of those pigments rather than just one. So if you feel like when you're using watercolors, they're just really soft or desaturated and they don't have that impact that you want, start layering your colors. When you layer it, you'll get really gorgeous results. For that pink one, I did a pink layer and then I went in with a very yellowy warm color and it has this really gorgeous golden look to it. And when you look at it up close, you can see the differentiation between the two different paints. But when you're looking at it farther away and meshes together into one color, it's a great way to add a lot of depth and interest to your watercolor pieces. And repeating glazing can really help smooth things out. So like I mentioned, and like I'll show you that first example that I tried to do where I got it really streaky, I did several layers of glazing on top of it of these graded washes. And after a while, it evens it out. So those imperfections that are very obvious with your first pass can become almost invisible by the time you're on several passes into it. So if you're struggling with getting really smooth flat washes or really smooth graded washes, creating more of those layers on top of itself will eventually even out a lot of the minor issues that you might have. I do that all the time where if there's something that it dries a little bit weird. So some area has a little bit more pigment and a little bit less in some areas. I let that dry and I just do several layers on top of it until it builds up to the point that it has this really smooth look to it again. So it is really very redeemable when you do have these washes that aren't perfectly smooth. It's not the end of the world. There's a lot that you can do to smooth that out and really bring it back into a nice flat, even look. And so for that blue one, I eventually did that purple fading up into the blue. So that is how I like to do two different colors together. But when you're doing two colors and you want to paint them together, like you would with the other glazing that I do, it's just you replace instead of using clear water with a second color that you've already mixed. I find that the ones that blend the best are ones that are analogous colors. So ones that are right next to each other on the color wheel, those blend really smoothly together. And you can really mix anything you want, but those are the ones that will get really vibrant colors that'll still blend really well together. And when you're doing graded washes, you can use gravity to your advantage. Usually when I'm doing graded washes like this, I will hold the painting surface in my hand and I'll just lift that board up a little bit, just like an inch in the back off the board. So there's just a slight incline. And as I do that, as I do each stroke of paint, the gravity will pull that water droplet downward with it. And that again, just helps the paint disperse in a really even smooth way in a way that I don't have to fight quite as much as when it's laying flat. And for these ones, I just stuck a little roll of tape underneath the back edge of it. And that just propped it up just enough to bring that paint down. And you can immediately see the water pool down at the bottom edge. And you want to make sure that it's enough that the water pools down into that bottom little lip of water that you'll see on my paint or on my paper that is, but not so much that it's lifted high enough that that water breaks and then it falls down. You want it to stay there so that you can control how that water droplet spreads down throughout the paper. And that is it for today. I know today was pretty basic, but sometimes I need to get back to the basics and remember how to do it. And I'm glad that I did because that first example showed me that I do need to get a little bit more practice in with that. Uh, but yeah, that is about it for today. I do post every Wednesdays and Saturdays. And I think for these little graded washes, I'm probably gonna cut them out and add some sort of image on top of it. So I'm excited to have these nice smooth graded washes to work off of as a base, but yeah, I uh, had a lot of fun getting back to just painting these nice smooth gradients. They're really pleasant. And it's a really good idea if you're starting off to practice doing graded washes like this and practice your flat washes and just get 
used to doing it before you're into the final paintings because that way you can get very comfortable with that technique. Anyways, that is it for today. So I'll see you guys at my next video. 